The first time I was put in seclusion, that solitary confinement, was because of snoring. Andrew, who I was sharing a bay with, was a snorer of prehistoric proportions. His night noises made you think of seismic shifts, of Teutonic plates grumbling and long dead lizards screaming into the night. It was, and I'm not joking here, it was obscene. I have no idea how anyone else slept. Maybe because they were taking the meds, which, which I was still refusing. So they, uh, to help me out, they put me in seclusion. I couldn't hear anything beyond the padded walls. I surveyed the simple room, the, the little simple single mattress, the lack of stimuli, any stimuli whatsoever, and quickly decided it was horrific. Anyone with a mad choking brain would have no distractions from their splintering mind. It was, I concluded, the kind of place where you could happily rip your eyes out. I did have a good night's sleep though. The next morning, I took to my little notebook in outrage. I wrote in large letters, Solitary fucking confinement is a fucking disgrace. <sighs> and then I started to draw up my alternative vision for solitary confinement. Okay, I might need to read this. There would be nature murals on the walls, tiny speakers relaying the nature sounds from the middle of a forest in real time. There would be a comfy bed, that bed was rubbish, um, some Play-Doh because, you know, you can't top yourself with Play-Doh, and, uh, and children's novels, uh, religious texts and self-help books, all very high-risk stuff, at least, at least one nurse seemed to think. As she was grappling a patient into solitary confinement, I offered them a book. I offered the, the patient a book to keep her company, the BFG. And this nurse looked at me and said, oh no, you don't know what they can do with things. And, you know, maybe she was right, but that patient didn't strike me as, you know, she didn't strike me as utterly distraught. She didn't strike me as violent. What harm would giving her a book do? You can't slit your wrists with, with, with thousands and thousands of paper cuts. I'm on an all male ward now and I have just been thrown in seclusion for real. Um, it was to do with the ward guitar, which was, which was my idea actually. Huh? See, one of my good ideas did get taken on. They have these stupid rules of being stricter than the last, the mixed ward I've just been on, Ashton. They have these stupid rules about when you can and cannot use the guitar. A, a nurse has to be watching you. And if there isn't enough nurses, that which there often isn't, then no guitar. Today, they tried to take it from me, but I wouldn't let go. Eventually, about three big burly nurses grappled me to the floor and took it off me. But I think I bit one of them. And so I'm thrown in solitary confinement for real. And a lucky nurse is stationed just outside to watch you. Sometimes they leave the door ajar. And yeah, you just left to get on with it. Calm down, I, I suppose. But who wants to calm down. I take this moment to yell about everything that is wrong with the NHS. And, and I talk about love, my love for Morella. This is a, a, a um, what is she? She's 
She's a schizophrenic girl I met on The Last World and now I can't see her anymore. So I yell about my love for her and also and also about how how love isn't anywhere in the NHS and how art and, and, and love and care instead of medication could really help people. And how everything is such a waste. A waste of time, a waste of res resources, a mind boggling, stupid waste. I yell until my throat hurts, until I've given myself a headache and, and my ears ache. Ha! I'm sure that provided a lot of entertainment for my fellow inmates rather than annoying them and I feel I have told the system what for. I'm sure a lot of doctors and nurses were listening attentively and taking notes. I stop. Okay Chris, I'm, I'm ready to come out now. Chris smiles at me. He's a good nurse and has often been very kind and, 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 and insightful with me. But I think I've pissed him off. And he's getting a bit of a kick out of this. You have to prove you calm down first. Uh, how, how long will that take? About an hour, if you're quiet. Well, can I, can I have a book then? No. I search my pockets. I have nothing. They take your watch, your belt, everything you have when they dump you in here. All I have, right, all I have is a sort of cardboard toilet thing. Um, the toilet thing has a large lowered circle so you can sit and have a dump. And a few little deep indentions, I guess, to keep the whole thing sturdy while you relieve yourself. Nothing you can do with that. Except, you know, have a shit. Unless, unless, I search my pockets again. Unless you have a pen lid. So, for the next 45 minutes, I play a self-devised game called Potty, Potty Pen Lid Netball. Every compartment in the cardboard loo is worth different points. I get the highest score in potty pen lid netball ever recorded. Once again, I'm astounded by my ingenuity. Yeah, I can't say it, but I was astounded by it. I'm a bit like Steve McQueen in The Great Escape. Great Escape. Another thing I can't say. I'm a bit like Steve McQueen in The Great Escape with his baseball. But, you know, with a cardboard toilet and a pen lid. 